Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. We continue with this month's theme of A Hunting We Will Go, and then go to the vet. Today's example is a two and a half year old female entire Norwegian elk hound that was hunting yesterday for two and a half hours. When she came home, everything was normal, but after five hours of resting, she had breathing frequency from 60 breaths per minute while resting and putting her head up and stretching her neck in what we call orthopnic breathing. Her C-reactive protein, or CRP, was measured and was a little bit higher than normal. We observe that in all lung fields, but worse, both cotodorsally and on the left, when compared to the right, there is mild to moderate increase in soft tissue opacity, which partially to completely obscures some of the fine vascular markings, which can create air bronchograms. The caudal lobar vessels are near completely obscured by this process, where cranioventrally the distribution is more patchy and certainly left-sided. So this is the right lateral view, which allows for improved inflation of the non-dependent left lung. And this is the patchy change we observe in the cranial subsegment of the left cranial lung lobe evidenced by an air bronchogram. So soft tissue opacity with air through the airways. And we have lobar margination or distinction of the cranial lobar margin by changes within the pulmonary parenchyma of the left caudal lung lobe. The silhouette of the heart, the great vessel, the pleural space, the diaphragm and the thoracic margins are all within normal limits. The skeletal structures are also within normal limits. Our conclusions for this patient is a moderate diffuse unstructured interstitial to alveolar lung pattern that is substantially worse both caudodorsally and worse on the left. Additionally, and incidentally, there is increased soft tissue overlying the dorsal border of the trachea extending cranially from the level of T1. And this likely represents the redundant trachealis muscle or could be superimposition of the esophagus. The distribution pattern of the alveolar pattern is most consistent with pulmonary edema. Given the history of hunting in this individual, hunting edema of Swedish hunting dogs is considered most likely. Alternative considerations can include atypical pneumonia, hemorrhage, pulmonary lymphoma, or non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema that can be due to upper airway obstruction, near drowning, or seizure. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case Thanks for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.